You're one of the country's greatest magicians, Cartier. So I'll give you a good trick to do. I'll give you till Saturday to get that money. I don't like your attitude, Grolberg. I'll pay you that money when I get good and ready. Sunday night. And again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, the whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the strange story, The Nemesis. A big railroad station in America's biggest city. Many people here, many lonely people, many desolate souls, many strange people. Look over there, standing beside that exit, a beautiful girl with blue eyes and blonde hair. Lovely creature. Beside her stands a man, a dark, silent man. The blonde and the silent man search the crowd from the incoming trains feverishly. Then suddenly the beautiful blonde speaks. Lou, there he is. That's Cartier. Where? The swanky one with the Homburg hat and the cane. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, Sandra. I'll get him. See you later. You know what to do. Yeah, I know. So long, Sandra. Lou, the dark, silent one, slips quickly through the crowd and steps up behind the man in the Homburg hat. Your name Cartier? What? Cartier the Great, the magician. Why, that's right. Who are you? Doesn't matter. Just start walking. What'd you say? Out the door. That's a gun in your ribs, Mr. Cartier, so just keep walking. What does this mean? I demand an explanation. Just keep walking to that cab at the curb. Where are you taking me? You'll be surprised. Yes, Cartier, you will be surprised. You're going to the very place you planned not to go. But here you are, Cartier, right in front of it. A tall office building on 42nd Street. All right. Get out, Cartier. You know where you are now. Grolberg. It's Grolberg. Get out. And no funny moves. I'll go along with you. Careful, Cartier. Very careful across the walk into the elevator and up to the seventh floor. <laughs> Well, here we are, the seventh floor. All right, I'll leave you here, Cartier. Go on in. Hey, what, what does he want? What does Grolberg want? I don't know, buddy. But go on in. You'll find out. See you later. Oh, there, there you are, Grolberg. <clears throat> well, what a surprise. I really didn't expect to find you here this time of night. And why did you come? Oh, I wanted to see you. Did you? I sent someone to see that you did come. Well, now, wait a minute. I resent this. <laughs> I'm getting a new manager tomorrow. No, no, you're not. Not tomorrow or any other day. Wait a minute. Are you threatening me, Grolberg? That depends. Where is it? What? The $2,000 you owe me. Oh, well, I, uh, I had a little trouble. You used that see. the last trip. Well, I'm sorry to say I haven't a cent, but I'll get it now. Give me a little time. I've given you two years. You'll get it. You act as though I was trying to beat you out of you it. You would if you got half a chance. Now, get this. I need that money, and I need it right away. Giving you exactly five days to dig it up. But I haven't got it. And get it. I'll be waiting here at six o'clock next Saturday night. And believe me, Cartier, you'd better have it. And if I don't? Then I'll blackball you in every agency in the country. I'll see that you never work in vaudeville again. You wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? Goldberg, I'll pay you that 2000 When I get ready. Saturday night. No bushy-haired, fat face like you is going to threaten me. I don't need you. I can get a booking any day in the week. Try it. I don't like your nasty attitude. Good night, Grolberg. Wait a minute, Cartier. How would you like to dig up 3,000 instead of two? What do you mean? Take a look at this. Ever see this check before? George Wilton, $1,000. Notice your signature. And see what it says? No account in this bank. You know, you shouldn't pay gambling debts with rubber checks. Where'd you get that? Georgie Welton needed some money, so I took it off his hands. Georgie's my partner now. What are you going to do with it? Keep it till six on Saturday night. If you don't hand over the money, this goes to the D.A. Six o'clock, Cartier. You're a swine, Grover. You'll get the money? No. No, not by Saturday, not ten years from Saturday. That final? Yes, that's final. Okay, too bad. This is the end of a great career. 
Now you can go to the devil. <laughs> Get booking. Who will I see first? Matt Rubicum. Well, here you are, Cartier, standing in his office. It's Tuesday morning. You've got till Saturday. Good morning. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to see Mr. Rubicum. Uh, Cartier is the name. Mr. Cartier to see you, Mr. Rubicam. Oh, yes, sir. He says he can't see you, Mr. Cartier. He's, uh, he's in conference. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> Matt Bromley, there's a swell guy. He tried to sign me up for years. It's Wednesday now. Not much time left. Hurry, Cartier. Matt, <laughs> how are you? I'm busy. Look, I want to talk to you about a booking. Yeah, uh, leave your number with the boy. Bromley, I wouldn't let you handle me if you begged me on your knees. <laughs> I'm caught here to grace. I'm big time. I'll show him. It's Wednesday now. Only two days left. Harry Masnick, tackle him. Hello, <coughs> Harry. How goes it? Oh, hello, Cartier. I want to talk over that offer you made me. Uh, what offer? Why, any one of the ten you made me last year. You don't seem to remember any offer. What? Are you kidding? What do you do? Now, wait a minute. Get down off your high horse, Harry. Uh, sorry, magic ain't going this season. I could place a dog act. If I didn't think you were kidding, I'd take a poke at you. It's Grolberg. Grolberg, that dirty rat. I didn't think he'd do it. Cut me out as clean as a whistle. This is Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday, and the next day is... What was it, Grolberg said? The end of a great career. This is Saturday. Not much time now. Time, time. That's what you want, Cartier. Time, remember? Hurry. It's five till six. Groberg's waiting. Hello, Groberg. Oh, hello. Now, look, Groberg, have a heart, will what you? What do you want? I didn't think you'd go through with it. I can't get booked in any place. Now, how do you expect me to pay you back? You said you didn't intend to. I know, but I've got a proposition to make about, about that check. Nothing doing. You made your choice. Now, you're not really going to turn it over to the DA? With pleasure. I see. Hey, what's that gun on your desk for? Gun? Oh, I figured you'd be coming back, but I wasn't sure just what frame of mind you'd be in. You expect me to believe that? I don't care whether you do or not. You know what I think? I'm listening. I think your back's against the wall. I think you're broke and you're facing something unpleasant. Well, if I am, you aren't helping much. I might. How? Oh. I've got a ring here that's worth at least 2000 Oh, I don't want any ring. Now, wait a minute. Take a look at it. It's, it's a cat's eye. Yeah? Yeah, it looks four miles deep. Notice the cut, the coloring, the depth of it? Yeah. This ring is worth money, Groberg. A lot more than that check. I can't pay you all I owe, and maybe you can't pay all you owe, but a little would help us both. Yeah? You notice the fire in it? You see? You notice how it flares? Yeah. You're broke, Groberg. You're broke. That's it. You're a failure. You haven't a chance. You're through. Look at this ring. This ring for the check. Okay. Give me the ring. There's only one way out for you, Rolberg. Better take that gun on your desk and use it for a one-way ticket. That's the best way out for you. You're a failure. You're washed up. You're through. A failure. Washed up. Through. Sorry, Rolberg. Good night. Huh? Oh, oh, Mr. Cartier. What time is it? Uh, five after six. Thanks. Good night. See you in the morning. Yes, sir. Hello there, Billy. Give uh, me a hand with these buckets, will you? Ah, uh, sure. Well, what for are you starting on tonight? Seven. Mainly taking them up to six. Uh, there we are. That's got it. Work, work, work. At 65, I should have a place of my own with a garden. And here I am, slaving away at $12 a week. That ain't much. But I only make 17, and I got a wife who likes clothes. I heard that before. <laughs> ah, here you are. Thanks. I'll ring when I'm ready for the next floor. Oh, what's that? A shot. 
Hey, come from right across the hall. Grolberg's office. Come on. Gee, gee whiz. It's Grolberg. Shot himself. Holy mother, get the police. <laughs> Oh, the same night, and we are standing at an open window, eight flights up, still in Manhattan. That wide space out there is Washington Square. Yes, we're on Washington Square South, Greenwich Village. Artists, sculptors, models, actors, poets, and paupers. Behind you, in this cheap apartment, a party is in progress. <laughs> oh, come on, folks, have another drink. Okay, make mine a Tom Cole. I have a Cuba Libra. Uh, help yourself in the kitchen, that's the best way. What's wrong with you, Sandra? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. Why? Oh, come on now. Why, Mo? Cheer up. Hey, Jerry. Who else is coming tonight? Oh, quite a crowd. Do you know who I like? No, who? That big, good-looking football player from Oklahoma. You know, the one he laughs all the time. Oh, Ralph Brent? Yeah, I like him. <laughs> He's wealthy, isn't he? Oh, that is why you like him. Who else is coming? Well, remember Cartier, the magician? Oh, He yes. said he'd try to come. Oh, maybe he'll do some of his tricks again. <laughs> oh, golly, it's hot in here. Well, Ricardo, open that window in the kitchen. Get a breeze in there, huh? Oh, somebody's at the door. Hello, Cartier. Glad you could make it. You know, everybody, make yourself at home. Refreshments in the kitchen. Help yourself. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Cartier. I think you know everybody. Uh, Sandra, uh, Sandra Hale, Cartier the Great. Oh, yes, the magician. Yes, I should say I do know him. Hello, Sandra, how are you? Will you help me in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Why, can't you pull your drinks out of your hat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's awful stuff. Come along, then. <laughs> Ah, let's see. What have we? Oh, yes, yes. This is for me. How have you been, Sandra? I hear you've been on the road a year. That's right. Didn't you miss me? What have you been doing? Modeling. Modeling? <laughs> Here, watch. There. Drink right out of your sleeve. Ever see that one? Yes. Too often. Better save your tricks for the crowd. They'll be jealous. Come on, let's join All them. right. Come on, Cartier, we're waiting to be hoodwinked. What have you got in your bag this time? Oh, a few oldies, a couple of new ones. We don't care, I love them all. Okay, okay, now wait a minute. You see the scarf? Yeah, what? Uh -huh. Wait a minute. All right, here's the scarf. Now, nothing in it. I wave it twice in the air, pass it around the room, and then I place it gently on Bella's head. Now, I remove the scarf, and there you are. What is it? What happened? Well, feel the top of your head, Bella. Ain't it there? Oh, feel, feel. Okay. <laughs> Mike! Mike! Oh, that's a dirty trick. Oh, you dare to Oh, she'll get over it. It was a white mouse. <laughs> Come on in here, Sandra. I want to talk to you. Tell me, who do you model for, Sandra? I did do some fashion photographs. Did? Yes, but lately it's been slow. How lately? Well, as a matter of fact, I worked only four times this year. Only four times? Mm-hmm. My books show $100 in the past year. Really? Well, why don't you try something else? Why waste time modeling? What, for instance? Oh, well, why don't you marry me, Sandra? You know, I love you. I've always loved you. Why don't you give me a job? Hmm? As what? An assistant. So, you know, I believe you've got something there. I'd like that. <laughs> Good. When do we start rehearsal? Right now. Now? Oh, this is so sudden. Oh, there's a lot to learn. It takes several months of hard work. I don't mind. You know, I've got several new ideas for next season, but I haven't decided on anything definite. We could do a hypnotist act. I could be a stooge. Mm. Hey, Cartier, huh? come out of the kitchen. The big championship fight on tonight. You want to listen? The preliminaries are on now. Okay, just a minute. We're busy. We can sure see that. <laughs> Sandra, have you ever been hypnotized? Never. Why? Well, it would make a terrific act. Well, how do you know you can hypnotize me? I could try. <laughs> okay, try it. All right. Here's a ring. Now, you gaze into it. Don't look away. Just keep gazing. You're going to sleep. The ring. You're getting drowsy. You can hear no sound but my voice. Repeat what I say. I am going to sleep. I am getting drowsy. I can hear no sound but your voice. No sound but my voice. Take this pad and pencil. Write. Jerry is a simpleton. Now, wake up. Sandra! Huh? What? Oh, uh, how do you know you can? Can what? Hypnotize me. <laughs> I've just done it. Isn't this your writing? Well, yes, but 
I didn't write oh, it. Oh, but you did. You did. I saw you, and very good. Say... But I wouldn't write anything wait, like... Wait, wait. Let's try it again. Here, here. Look in the light. Sleep. Sleep. My voice. My voice. You can only hear my voice. I'm now asleep. Do you see Madison Square Garden? There's a fight going on. What round is it? Two. If one man falls, tell me. One falls. Which one? Which one? Murray or cats? Cats. They hold up the other's hands. Sandra, wake up. Wake up. Oh. What did I do? Oh, nothing very important. Come with me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, quiet, quiet, please, please. I wish to make an announcement. Oh, go ahead and make well, it. From this day on, the act of Cartier the Great shall be billed as Cartier and Sandra. Yes, yes, I've discovered a new partner. She is clairvoyant to the nth degree. I shall develop my new hypnotism act, and Sandra is to be my assistant. All right, okay. Come here, Sandra, take this ring. Sit down. I'm going to show you, pighead, something. Now, all right, now, Jerry, Jerry, now, I don't know who you've invited here tonight, and if I did, there's no way of our telling you walk in the door next. Is that right? Well, I'm going to hypnotize Sandra, and she's going to describe the one who'll enter next. All right, now, quiet. Wait a minute. Quiet, please. Sandra, sleep. Sleep. Drowsy. Drowsy. Look into the future. Tell us, Sandra... Describe the person who will enter that door next. Speak. A man. A small, thin man. Curly hair. A slight mustache. Eyes close together. Sunken chest. And he... He walks with a slight limp. Hey, that's Georgie. Georgie Welton. Yeah, he's coming tonight. That's him exactly. Did you say Georgie Welton? Sure. You know him. Yes, he... I know him. Man. She, she's saying something else. Man. Oh, there's something wrong with him. He's in danger, in trouble. Yes, he doesn't know it, but he's approaching something terrible. Sandra, Sandra, wake up. Wake up. I, oh, what happened this time? What did I say? Well, why is everybody staring at me so strangely? Oh, it's Georgie. For the love of Mike, where you been? I've been busy. Sandra was right. She guessed it. It was you. Hey, what was me? Oh, she sure hit it. Oh, it is uncanny. How do you do it, Sandra? What are you talking about? That's what I want to know. Oh, nothing, Georgie. Forget it. Uh, go on out in the kitchen. Help yourself. Anything you want. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, what's out here? Hello, Georgie. Come here. What's the matter, Georgie? You look a bit pale. What are you doing here? Waiting for you, Georgie. Where you been hiding? What do you want? I want to make a little deal about that check I gave you. I'd like to get it squared up. What kind of a deal? Well, you see, I'm a little short of cash right now, and I knew you could use some, so I thought I might give you this ring. It's worth a couple of thousand. Be a good deal. How about it? Well, I... You see, I ain't got the check no more. Where is it? I sold it to Groberg. Why'd you do that? I needed the dough. Well, you can get it back and still have some left. Yeah, I could, only... What's the matter with you? Well, ain't you heard? Heard what? Groberg's dead. 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 When did this happen? Well, this evening at his office. He said he committed suicide. <whistles> what do you know? Poor old Groberg. I guess he got up against the wall. Huh? Yeah. Hey, gee, I... What's wrong? I feel kind of sick and kind of dizzy. It's pretty hot tonight. Come on over to the window. The air will help you. Here, drink this. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Now, about this check... I'd like to have it. Take a look at this ring. This ring would make it more than worth your efforts in getting that check into my hands. You understand? I don't want anything like that hanging over me when I can possibly avoid it. <laughs> Everybody happy? That's him. That's Ralph. Where have you been? Well, I got delayed over in Jersey. Hiya, gang. Well, you know everybody. <laughs> yeah, sure. See, has the fight started yet? I got to hear that. Oh, it's on now. Radio's in the bedroom. First round's just over. Yeah, well, I'm betting kind of heavy on cats. Uh, say, anybody want to bet? I'm offering ten to one. 
How much you say you were offering? Ten to one. I'll take some of that. Okay. How much? Oh, I've got 200 to put on Murray. Well, now, that's a bet. Are you sure you can spare? I'm worrying about you. <laughs> oh, don't worry about me. No, sir. Turn it up, Scotty. Well, turn it up. I want to hear it. They come into the ring dancing. There goes Cat. She's a little groggy after that last one, but she's working hard now. Uh-huh, there. Cat lands a left of the jaw. A right, a left, onto the... Oh, a hard left to Murray's stomach. And Murray looks a little tired, but he's in there punching. Yes, he's in there. Yes, oh, he landed a left to Cat's button. And he's following it right through. And up to the jaw. Another one, another one. And there he goes. Cat is down. He's down. Three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's out. Murray is the winner. Turn it off. Well, you win, fella. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you. Say, where'd you get that hunch, Katya? I don't know, Jerry. I'm sure I don't know. Yes? What's going on here? A party. Come on in, join us. Thanks. Come on in, Murphy. Any of you people know George Welton? Sure, we all do. You know where he is? He's here. Oh, yeah. He's been here for some time. Where is he? Why, he's... Hey, who are you? What do you want? Police headquarters. Police? What? What's he done? I didn't say he'd done anything. Where is he? Uh, Georgie? Hey. Hey, where is Georgie? He was out in the kitchen. Well, get him, fella. What's he done, officer? You... Been here all evening. Hey, Jerry, she isn't here. Well, look in the bedroom. He's not here either. How on earth did he get out? You want to know? Oh, why keep us in the dark? He went out through the window. Oh, that's ridiculous. There's no fire that's escape. That's right. We just found him eight stories below on the sidewalk. You... Oh, found this note on him. Said he was sick and he was going to end it all. That makes it a clear case of suicide. Oh, oh I can't Suicide, huh? That. I thought he was acting funny. Poor George. What a shame. I can't imagine what came over him. Well, oh, gee, she told us it was going to happen. I thought she was kidding. Yeah, who told you? Why, Sandra over there. She told us before George came in the room that he was approaching something terrible. That he was in trouble. How'd she know that? I don't know. We were kidding, and Katya hypnotized her, and she described Georgie as the next one to enter, and then she told about something going to happen to him. Oh, is that so? Well, uh, who is she? Sandra Hale. Sandra Hale. Are you Cartier? That's right. What do you know about this Sandra Hale? Well, I found that she was a very easy subject to hypnotize. So... Hey, I'll bet that's how he knew who was going to win that fight tonight. Yes, that's right. Under hypnosis, she has an uncanny power to see into the future. What's the matter with her now? Why is she sitting over there in the corner? Yeah, what's she staring at? Oh, I just better ask her a few questions. I, I'd rather you didn't just now. Oh, yes? Why well, not? I hypnotized her and... Yeah, Why? I wanted to see if she could tell me the winner in the derby tomorrow, and, well, and you came in, and that sort of broke my control. I found it very difficult to snap her out of it quickly. Mm. I'll let her alone for a few minutes, and I'll get her out. What's she staring at? What's she got in her hand? Oh. She's mumbling Sorry. something. Wait a minute. Sorry. Whose ring is this she's holding? It's mine. In order to put the subject under, he must stare into a shining object. Miss Hale. Miss Hale. I asked you not to bother her. Yeah? Miss Hale. She's in a trance. Miss Hale, did you see George Welton in trouble? Falling through space. Dying. He's dead. Did he jump? Yes. No. He's being forced. Forced to do something. Against his will? Yes. He's writing. Writing something. Hey, Joe, give me that suicide note quick. Miss Hale, take this. Is he writing this note? Yes. But he doesn't know it. Someone is dictating to him. I'm dictating to him. You? What else do you see? A shining object. It's blinding. Go on. Now. Now he's sitting behind a desk. The thin man? George? No. He is bushy-haired and fat. He's high up. He is bushy-haired and fat. With a large nose. A mustache. Sandra, wake Go up. On, leave wake her up. Alone, will you leave her alone? She's in bad shape. I tell you something might happen on, to her. A bushy-haired fat man at a desk. What's he doing? There's a gun on the desk. 
He's staring at something. Something bright. He's saying something. No. Someone else is saying something. I am saying something to him. Does this fat man have a gold front tooth? Gold front tooth. Yes. Hey, that's a perfect description of Goldberg, Georgie's partner. Certainly is. He shot himself tonight. Is someone dictating to him? Yes. I am. You? Are you in the same room? No. I am standing on the curb below. I'm looking up and mumbling. What are you mumbling? Pick up gun. Only way oh. out. Against your temple. Fire. Let her alone. You're killing her. Sandra, Sandra. What was the bright object he was staring at? I don't know. Yes, I see it. I see it now. Is it a ring? Yes, a ring. A shining cat's eye. I must escape. The same ring the thin man saw before he fell? The same. I must escape. The same you're staring at now? The same. Well, Cartier, how do you like that? Hey! Hey, where is he? Why, wait, wait, Cartier is gone. You dope, why didn't you stay at the door? Well, I hate you. Hey, anybody leave this room, Murphy? Well, yeah, a fellow went upstairs, but nobody went down. Upstairs, that's him. Murphy, downstairs and cover the elevator. Come on, Joe, he's probably making for the roof. We'll go after him. <laughs> Time. More time. One more floor. I need time. 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 One more floor. There it is. The door to the roof. Fifteen feet to that other roof. I can make it. I've got to make it. Fifteen feet or fifteen stories straight down. Fifteen feet or fifteen stories. Okay. Stop. Don't do it. Well, Cartier. There you are, 15 stories down. This is one trick you must. Maybe this is what Groberg meant when he said, The end of a great career. Too bad, Cartier, but you didn't know what I know. A woman was your nemesis, Cartier. Yes, a woman. A beautiful blonde with blue eyes. <laughs> Remember Sandra? Yes, Sandra. You really hypnotized Groberg and Georgie, and Sandra, too, the first time, but not the second time. Sandra was faking then. She was too strong-willed for you. She was faking. She suspected you, and for good reason. She had married Groberg a month ago. It was Sandra who pointed you out to the man at the station. Yes, Cartier, a woman was your nemesis. <laughs> CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time... I, The Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual tale. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>